What's up, people? Welcome or welcome back to Invest with T. Claus. My name is Tevi, and this channel is dedicated to my investment journey, along with coverage on crypto, Tesla, Neo, Virgin Galactic, and ChargePoint. Come for the information and stay for the perspective. Well, if I had to describe the market this week in one word, it would be freefall. It started with Powell stating that they are ready to go higher for longer to nail down inflation. As a reminder, we have PCI and PCE next week. The fear, of course, is that those come in hotter than expected, forcing the Fed to actually follow through with more drastic actions. But if that wasn't enough, Silicon Valley Bank, or SVB, was ordered to shut down by the FDIC on Friday. This was after they failed to raise the needed capital to stay in operations. This represents the second largest banking failure since the financial crisis in 2008. This bubble chart here does a great job at illustrating the magnitude of this failure. This impacts VC firms, some crypto companies, and we even saw the USDC stablecoin DPEG as a result. All major indices declined by nearly 5% on the news and ChargePoint, still freshly on the heels of what Wall Street is considering a shaky earning call, lost an additional 12.73% this week. So in today's video, I'll go over some quick takeaways from the earning call and why there was some disappointment, then cover the latest partnership ChargePoint announced, we'll check on overall analyst sentiment around the stock, and close with what I'm personally doing as far as buying or selling, given where we are and where we're going more importantly. So as always, this isn't to be taken as financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. This is my personal approach to investing and a thought process behind it. I'd recommend watching all the way through so that you don't miss out on any pertinent information I'll be sharing. Drop this video an early like if you haven't already and hit that subscribe button. Those are two easy ways to show your support to the channel and help it grow if you appreciate the content. All right, let's get into it. Well then, if you set the macro news aside, there are two main reasons why Wall Street wasn't pleased with the charge point results. Number one, they fell short of their own revenue guidance. Most people don't like it when you overpromise and underdeliver. The main reason was related to persistent supply chain issues. Pasquale Romano, the ChargePoint CEO, stated, and I quote, ChargePoint delivered its largest sequential revenue growth to date in another record quarter, although below our guidance range, as supply challenges for our DC solutions and quarter end shipment challenges at this growth rate persisted, end of quote. Now, the second reason is forward guidance on revenue. ChargePoint guided to revenue of $122 million to $132 million. This represents a 56% year-over-year improvement for Q1 this year, which sounds good until you compare it to the Q4 2022 growth performance of 93% and the full 2022 calendar year performance of 94% revenue growth. This is a significant deceleration, and you can understand why Wall Street wasn't pleased. Now, their CEO explained that there is an element of seasonality, and they expect more significant revenue growth in subsequent quarters as the year goes on. Other key points I noted during the call, they now count 80% of Fortune 50 companies as customers, which is good, and overall 55% of Fortune 500 companies in the U.S., I will link the full earning result and investor deck in the description below. The bottom line here for me is that they still see a path to be profitable by fiscal year 2025. And despite the so-called disappointing guidance, realize that 56% growth in revenue is still really significant. That's what Tesla is delivering on and being praised for by Wall Street. So that's some perspective for you. Now, keep in mind that ChargePoint is set to continue to grow, and that growth will only accelerate as supply chain issues alleviate, right? They're definitely learning from last year's and tempering expectations as a result, but the reality is, as more EVs come onto the scene and fleets get electrified, ChargePoint remains the number one go-to solutions. A great example is the new partnership they announced with Fisker, right? So as Fisker brings on the Ocean SUV to market, Fisker customers will be onboarded onto the ChargePoint app and will have access to the vast ChargePoint network. Now, of course, the elephant in the room that we have to talk about is how does Tesla opening up their network to other brands impacts ChargePoint? And really the answer is, as seen with this partnership, Tesla's competition will continue to primarily choose ChargePoint as their official partner. But the main differentiator between ChargePoint and Tesla is the service that their respective infrastructures covers. Tesla is primarily focused on level three fast charging, whereas ChargePoint is pushing for more level two charging at your place of work, where you shop, and residential parking. So different verticals, and essentially both networks are actually complementing to one another. In the end, the non-Tesla owners are the real winners here with more EV charging options, and that is great for overall EV adoption to further accelerate. One of the benefits to covering ChargePoint a week and a half post earning call 
The analysts have had time to digest the news and the rating at this point are a great reflection of the sentiment on the longer term view. The consensus rating for the stock remains a strong buy. The breakdown is as follow. We have six buy ratings, two hold ratings and zero sell. That speaks volume in itself. The price target remains unchanged with $28 on a high end and $13 on the low end of the spectrum. The average consensus price target did drop a bit lower to $17, which still represents a 75.80% increase from current level. The upside here is significant, okay? Keep that in mind. Of course, you can only benefit from that if you're able to stomach the volatility and take the longer term view here. As far as near term, while well, you can see it on the screen here, there is a lot going on on the economic calendar between now and the end of the month. Looking at the technicals, you can see that we've broken below the 50 day moving average, post earning result, and the free fall has accelerated thanks to the macro news I covered at the start of this video. With RSI being 37.08 and what we have ahead next week, I would expect that the stock continues lower until we hit the oversold zone once RSI drops below 30. I'm expecting mid to low $9 and very likely lower if inflation data is not favorable and or we have more bank defaulting due to the contagion from SVB. I actually have to edit this section back in as I was recording, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen just announced that there will be no bailout for SVB. This is breaking news and will likely inject more fears into market next week. So even though I did buy 200 more shares at 999, because why not? It's like a sale 999, but all joking aside, there is a significant amount of uncertainty ahead. And my intention here moving forward is simply to hold until there is more clarity at the macro level. The reality is there are a lot of variables at the macro level that could push us significantly lower between now and the end of the month. I'd rather be cautious here and only deploy more into the market or crypto once the macro picture is clear. This means that I may not get the absolute lowest price, but my goal is never to time the absolute bottom or the absolute top, but rather doing what I can to maximize my buy points. The last thing I will say is this, by Friday next week, we'll have a pretty good indication of what the next rate hike is likely to be. If the CPI and PCE are better than expected, a 0.25 percentage point is likely to be the outcome for the next rate hike. If those come in blazing hot, the case for a 0.50 percentage point and an even higher terminal rate of 6% or above become more compelling. Either way, there's bound to be some pretty great deals in the coming weeks if you feel like being opportunistic, but again, no need to rush here. I'll personally be waiting for the dust to settle a bit before making any more moves. But on that note, that is it for me today. Keeping it short and sweet. If you found value in my content, click that like button and share with others who you think could also benefit from it. For my newcomers, subscribe. It's free. And don't forget to ring the notification bell so that you too can stay in the know. I'll be back on Sunday for my weekly video. Till then, you can keep up with me here on Twitter for crypto and NFT related news. Thank you for watching, stay humble, hustle hard, and I'll see you in the next one.